Photography Daily, the assignment. It's assignment day, where our special guest, today photographer and philosophical YouTuber, Sean Tucker, sets a photography challenge or a way to think about your picture making for the next seven days, if you will. Though many pick this assignment up on a Monday, the day of release, don't worry if you're coming to this on any other given day, perhaps even weeks after the original release, as these are are all assignments you can dip into whenever the time feels right. Though from the time you listen, the challenge clock officially starts to tick for the next seven days. Everybody can take part, whatever interests you have, whatever camera you hold, film or larger format, DSLR, mirrorless, compact, smartphone, it's all about the picture that you see. There is a show page on the website, photographydaily.show, and I'd love you to share the pictures you make for this challenge by sending them in to studio at photographydaily.show, and then I'll upload them to the show page for this edition. And you can check back, of course, to see pictures from this and previous editions too. And before we meet our special guest, my thanks to mpb.com who sponsor this show. The number one company in the UK, the US and Europe when it comes to buying and selling and trading used camera kits online. A safe place to do business with guarantees upon what you buy. And of course, you'll be part of the ever more important circular economy. Also, thank you, patrons. You do more than simply put a few pennies and cents in the pot. You're helping to support and build the idea for a a now and future photographic community online and in audio form. And to thank you in the patron area, there are extra goodies to hear, which you can get to through the website, photographydaily.show. There's our growing monthly Zoom where we chat and share pictures and record thoughts for the show. Uh, The more edition on Saturdays, which is many things, a diary feature, thoughts about photography, ideas for books, and sometimes additional parts of interviews not heard previously. Plus this weekend, or more 91, if you're coming to this in the future, a conversation with a designer and photographer called Mike Coos, uh, which is an exclusive on our Patreon channel. Kind of works well partnering today's assignment too, where Sean asks you to think like a designer. No more spoilers. Uh, Mike will be talking to me about his book, The Pocket Photographer, how to take great photos with your phone. And it's not a conversation about growing your Instagram per se, though it's certainly interesting to hear about that facet from a creative with a strong following. But it's about many of the basics that can be applied across the board, whatever you shoot with. And if you're a pro or otherwise, I know that sometimes I need a a little nudge to keep me from going stale on the composition front. To me, it's like a really dramatic, you know how lenses have a huge impact on your camera? Angles sort of have the same impact. All you have to do is take your phone from head height down to a couple of inches above the ground and it dramatically changes the frame, completely changes the world view. And even if you hold it above your head, it it does, even if it's only like eight feet off the ground, if your arm's stretched in the air, you know, that changes things a lot too. Mike Coos on more night. 91 this coming weekend. Right, let's meet our guest for today, setting you a challenge for the next seven days. The assignment. For quite a while, and I'm going to be cautious how I say this, Sean. (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like I should have a warning klaxon at this point. (laughs) But I know it's something you've talked about. You talked about your street photography in London, uh, people walking in and out of shadows. Mm. Um, there are images of yours that I, I really like. And um, I, I was um, on a railway station with my youngest son doing, you know, his favourite thing in the whole wide world, which is watch trains. <laughs> and uh, across the other side of the platform, the, su- the sun came out and, the, and it sort of dissected this platform and went straight through a couple that were standing there waiting for a train. So the hand went through the shadow and met the other one. You couldn't really see the other person. And, it, and it's difficult to describe, but it, it felt... And I, at the time, I said to my son, who looked at me oddly, that's a Sean Tucker shot. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, ki- we're kind of working with that today, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is the sort of thing that people would expect from me. Like, I, I, I am... Well, that's why I was being cautious, because I, I know that you want to be seen for so much more than that shot. No, no, but it's fine. I mean, you know, you, you get known for doing a thing. It's it's fine. You know, I, I want to do more than that thing, but I'm still proud of being able to do that thing. Yeah. I, I think um, I'm obsessed with shadows and the shapes that they cast, mm. you know, especially mm. in a, you know, era of 
obsession around things like how much dynamic range a sensor can have and how much data a raw file can hold. We're so obsessed with trying to rescue all the detail in every shadow and every highlight and getting a camera to see like our human eye sees. But I think there's a beauty in the limitation that a camera has and that it can't see what our human eye sees. And then teaching ourselves to see like the camera sees. So knowing that when I look at a scene, I can see into all the shadows and the highlights. But when I bring up my camera, because it only has maybe 14 stops of dynamic range, my my eye has tons, Mm. it's not going to be able to capture all that. So when I preserve the highlight and let the shadows fall dark, they'll go to black and they'll create interesting shapes in my frame if I compose them well. And I'm not worried about what's in them. I'm creating negative space and a bit of mystery on purpose. So I suppose the assignment would be uh, stop obsessing about the dynamic range, expose for the highlights, deliberately let the shadows fall dark, and then crunch the contrast more in post if you want so that you're creating interesting shapes in your images. Shoot like a graphic designer, maybe as a way to think about it. Create interesting shapes in your frames that visually, just the shape itself, you're not trying to tell a story, you're just trying to compose interesting shapes with light and shadow and see what you come up with. I like the idea of the mystery, create mystery. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it, we know it from films, don't we? Yeah. I mean, you watch old black and white films, everyone's coming out of the shadows yes. all the time. It's, yes. you, do you know what I mean? It's. <laughs> it, they're using it on purpose. And yeah. I think like the, the sort of photography that I, I used to do a lot more of and still do a bit now, this kind of light and shadow stuff, can be criticised for, well, it's not, it's not narrative. It's not telling a story like most street photography does. You're not, you can't see lots of characters interacting with each other. But I've always liked the old filmmaking techniques of there's, there's a hint of a person, but you can't really see them or what's going on, and you get to make up the rest of the story yourself. So you're giving the viewer the opportunity to make up their own narrative about what's happening because they don't have all the information. They just have a hint of what might be going on. They can see a leg stepping out of a shadow yeah. or the silhouette of someone standing against the scene, but they can't see the person. They just get an outline. So there's the idea of a person watching over a scene. Those kind of things I find really interesting because it's almost what you don't show people that makes it fascinating. Well, that's the, that the same goes for in films. It's sometimes what, what you don't hear. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Um, I think I think the shark in in Jaws was always that, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Because when, when the music went silent, I mean, it, do, do, yeah. do, 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 it was obviously here comes a shark. But the yeah. moment it went silent, that was the bit where the, the impending doom was. You thought, okay, at what moment is this going to happen? Yeah. And the silences, and in your case, the, sh- the shadows. Uh, yeah, that there was more mysterious. I, th- I think that makes sense. I might b- might be making a huge. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, I think I think. I mean, in his case, it was because he, you know, they couldn't get this animatronic shark. Yes. To work, could they? So actually, he wanted a lot more shark in it. Well, John it Williams, be- yeah, yeah. John Williams became the shark, didn't he? Yeah, and it, and it and it's influenced yeah. filmmaking ever <laughs> since. Yeah. So yeah, I reckon photograph like that. Stop obsessing with trying to capture every detail and every scene. Yeah. Just capture an area that's lit and then let everything else fall to dark. Fall to Make sure that darkness creates an interesting shape and that you're composing it well and then see what moves through your light. Yeah. And let the light be the focus only and, and use the negative space. So do you have any technical advice? I know we don't always choose technical paths, but uh, perhaps for this one that, that could be handy. So if you've got a camera with uh, with and you shoot sort of aperture priority, but it's got a highlight weighted metering mode, yep. photograph with that for the day. Right. If you shoot on manual, which, which I usually do, I often use a, a live exposure preview on the screen and I, I just use my uh, shutter speed and aperture just to make sure that my highlights are protected and I'm creating those dark shapes. Yeah. And that live preview helps me to see what shapes I'm actually getting versus what my eyes see. Yeah. And then it, it compose that stuff like a graphic designer. Like if there's a big uh, stripe across the scene or or a, or a diagonal shadow or a, or, a, or a spotlight of light and a load of yeah. darkness around it. Like place those shapes in the frame in ways that feel interesting. And that is our challenge for this week. I'll be delighted to see what you produce and would love to show them on today's corresponding show page on the website photographydaily.show. Music on the show from artlist.io and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you and talking with you on the photo walk. The assignment is a loading zone production.